should be good, I think. Okay, Tom. Okay. Well, I'm glad we got the slide up, and uh, thank you for. Uh, my name is Tom Zidell, by the way. I'm a solutions ex executive at, at Bells and uh, Nordic Bells, actually. And just want to welcome everybody today uh, to our final Informative Friday for October, and I, I think for this year until uh, we, we kick things off again next year, uh, I think in February. Uh, Arden Varney is going to be the primary presenter. He's going to be presenting the differences between Infor Microsoft add-ins and in Infor Spreadsheet Designer, and I'm sure I'll, a lot of other useful information. Uh, before I turn things over to Arden, though, let's just uh, quickly, for those of you who are not familiar with Bells, I'll give you a quick overview of who we are, and then uh, we'll get into the, uh, the primary piece of the presentation. Basically, Bales was founded way back in 1995. We've been partner with Infor and lost it in for and part of that community since uh, 1997. As many of you know, we've, uh, we're have we a full service implementation partner uh, with Infor, providing um, full human capital management cloud suite, finance and supply chain management offerings, as well as technical components, managed services, training and the like. Uh, our roots, since we've been around for so long, we've got deep roots within the loss and any four space uh, have been involved in many, many implementations, uh, and most recently doing many cloud suite implementations working uh, with our clients and with Infor as a partner. Uh, probably the most uh, recent and very important piece of uh, information that's on our slide here is way down at the bottom is, is the fact that we are now a subsidiary of Nordic Consulting. Nordic is a, uh, a global HR uh, healthcare consulting organization that uh, started out as uh, providing staffing for, for EPIC implementations and has grown over the years to now providing uh, clinical staffing and clinical implementation services, uh, strategic advisory services, uh, performance improvement within the healthcare space. We've got a digital and cloud uh, initiative uh, division that uh, is focused on cloud, cloud implementation work as well as providing services for Epic, Meditech, and server implementations and staffing. Uh, what that, why that's important and the benefit to our customers, basically it now allows us to provide uh, the same level of expertise on the clinical side, EMR and EHR system, as we provide on the ERP side. It allows us to now bring together ERP systems and EMR systems and help our customers uh, integrate those systems uh, within the healthcare space. So if you want to learn more about you know, Nordic's capabilities, uh, please reach out to myself or Molly, and we'll hook you up with the right folks here at Nordic Bells and, and tell you a lot more detail about the capabilities we have there. So uh, with that said, I'd like to turn things over to Arden, and uh, he'll jump into his presentation. All right, great. I'm just going to get my right screen up here. Share and this. Okay, can you guys see my screen? We can. All right, so quickly, um, I'll, just my quick introduction here. So my name is Arden Varney. I have been in the Infor Lawson space for as long as I can remember. <laughs> Starting 1994, uh, I became a client. Uh, we implemented, uh, I, I used to work for a restaurant chain, and we implemented uh, financials and HR payroll. Uh, I did. I was dangerous enough, so, uh, dangerous enough on the HR payroll side, but I I stuck to my knitting um, on the finance side. I'm a CPA, um, but yeah, I've been I've been with uh, I I was with that company from '94 to '96 when I did my implementation, and then I joined. Uh, I actually went to work for Lawson back in the Boston office back from '96 to '99, and I've been with Bales in one way, shape, or form since 1999. So a long, long time. Um, what we're going to do today, um, I'm going to cover add-ins. I'm going to cover add-ins versus Infor Spreadsheet Designer, why I like it more. Um, it's something that I've only started to play around with over the last couple of months, um, but there's a lot of uh, improved functionality, I think. I loved add-ins, love, love, love add-ins. The first time I saw it, I think I almost cried because I'm like, my God, I can I can actually load stuff myself. I can actually get data out myself. This is, this is wonderful. Um, but add, uh, ISD goes a step further and improves on some of those quirky things that you had to deal with in add-ins. And that's one of the areas that I'm going to focus on. 
The other area that I'm going to focus on for probably the second half of the presentation is the integration with Excel. Um, Infor Spreadsheet Designer makes it so much easier to then take the data that you received out of uh, Infor Spreadsheet Designer and make it easier to report on. If you guys are familiar with pivot tables, if you're familiar with um, you know, just how to do some data summaries and things like that, uh, it, it's much, much easier uh, in Enforce Spreadsheet Designer. And that's, that's kind of what I want to show. A lot of times, I know many of you, if you're using either Enforce Spreadsheet Designer or add-ins, you dump a table of 50, 100, 500,000 rows. <laughs> um, you know, maybe not the best purpose for, uh, for, for Excel, but hey, Excel will take up to, you know, over a million rows. Um, so you can use um, Excel as really like a little mini data mark, if you will. Um, so that's kind of what, what I'm going to cover today. Uh, you know, I've seen some of the other presentations out there about add-ins and they just kind of focus on, well, click this button and click this button and click this uh, checkbox on and off. Um, I'm going to do a little bit of that, but more about how add in or how um, Enforce Spreadsheet Designer is better and how, um, like I said, that really tight integration with Excel. So again, we'll do a quick history, talk about the improved Excel integration, and hopefully I'll have some time for questions. So add-ins became available. I think for me, the first I'm going to say it was way back in 2001. I had a client that I was working on. It was the first time I saw them. It might have been 2000. Uh, and again, kind of changed my life as a, as, a, as a consultant. I thought, wow, now I can, instead of having to go to IT for everything, and I love IT, uh, I could do a lot of things myself. I could do uploads myself. I didn't have to send a CSV file to someone who could then format it, put it into import DB. Wow, I could load directly to import tables by myself. I could query data out. I could, um, you know, pull things. Uh, and again, I was, if you're any good with Excel and you like to pull data in and start slicing and dicing yourself, it, it was a huge deal. Uh, basically available from version seven all the way up through version 10. Um, you used to have to purchase it. Uh, it, it was not it, it, you know, originally included in your info loss and license. I remember going to a, first, a few clients early on after having uh, clients that had add-ins and they didn't have them. I'm like, oh my God, really? Now I have to go backwards and, and not have add-ins? How, how do I do this? Um, but yeah, that used to be the case. Now it just basically is in your info package um, and, it's, and it's there for you to use. Um, for, for today, I'm going to focus on queries. Okay, there are uploads. There's a lot of functionality around uploads. And again, I think the uploads are actually better in ISD than they were in add-ins. Um, but I'm going to focus more on the query side. If we see a need for it, we need to pull together a separate class. Or again, we can point you out to some of our other presentations where they told we talk specifically about uploads. Um, we'll do that. But again, today I'm going to focus on uh, differences for add-ins uh, to ISD and then show how we integrate it uh, better with, with Excel. OK, so this is just kind of a, a quick and dirty. What's old, what's new? So with the add ins, I was using LSF and COBOL. Loved COBOL. COBOL is a great language for 50, 60, 70 years. Uh, but Info finally decided, yeah, we got to get out of the COBOL, COBOL business. So we moved uh, moved on to Landmark and LPO when you get into Cloud Suite and working on the web, et cetera. In the old, we queried and loaded to tables. In the new, you're going to see business classes. Um, you can also query from something called lists, which we'll talk about quickly as well, which is very, very, uh, a very, very nice piece of functionality. So when I when I say tables, or when you hear tables, or I'm sorry, when you hear business classes in the new world, think tables. Uh, it, it, you know, for I always like to have a old and a new, and what am I referring to? Um, in the old days, we had .dme, I think it was data mining engine or .uwf for upload wizard files. And they were kind of separate, and I'll show you an example of what those look like. Again, if you're using add-ins, I'm sure you're familiar with those, and you may have tens, if not hundreds of them stored out there. One of my old clients, Bell's Department Stores, had hundreds of these things. Um, and now we just have XLS or XLSX, so basically your Excel files, and that, that query just kind of embeds itself into uh, Excel, which there's a lot of benefits to having that. Uh, well, and again, we'll show that here in a few minutes. Um, on my, on my add-ins old, I have add, change, delete. 
in my new, I still I have a variety of actions. There's a lot more th that I can do uh, with ISD than I could in the old days. And in the old, I use control shift and the letter O to get table information. So if you were up on a had a form up and wanted to hit uh, wanted to know well, what is this form, what is this field, control shift O, that would tell me it would kind of point me in the right direction. Uh, in the new world, it's control shift left click to get business class information. So a little bit different. It took me a little while to get used to it. I still try to use control shift O and uh, Info doesn't know what I'm trying to do, but control shift left click to get your business class information. OK, so is there anything like the old data file text from V9 and V10? I got one of these questions in the in um, uh, kind of our pre planning here. Uh, short answer is yes, Info releases table definitions with each CU. You can also get these from the Infor supply portal. And if you need a hand, you know, getting yourself pointed to where those are, we can certainly help you out. But yeah, they're they're they're, they're table definitions. Now, <laughs> why didn't La Infor label this documentation business class definition? My big answer, uh, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe there's somebody out there that has a better answer. I I tried to think about it. I'm like, yeah, I don't I don't know why. Now, Keep in mind when Infor, you know, was developing Cloud Suite, it is it is extremely robust. It is more powerful, much more powerful than the the old days of V9, V10, et cetera. Um, there are way more business classes or quite a few more business classes and within it way more fields, way, 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 way more. So to give you an example, OK, in V9, V10, if you if you had a data file text, so if I went out to my data file text for uh, general ledger, it might be a couple hundred pages long, and that was kind of overwhelming. Uh, in Cloud Suite, the latest finance table definition document was uh, 3,200 pages. If you look at my little my little uh, mouse here, uh, yeah, one page one of 3,222. So it can get overwhelming. If you need a hand with, you know, good lord, which which table should I be going after? How many? There's so many of these things. Uh, us folks in the Bales world are very very versed in this. Um, and helping you kind of, you know, pick and parse out, you know, what you might actually be looking for. So one of the files that I'm going to be working with today is the asset business class. So again, I pulled this just from that same piece of documentation. It was buried down on page 329, um, but it gives me the, the the basic fields, what the data type is. Um, it also will do all the field relations, all that kind of stuff as far as um, as far as the what the old data file text used to do. So add-ins were designed as a true Excel add-in. You would log in, the add-in wizard would pop up, and then you'd pop through your individual tabs for you know, your welcome fields, column headings, criteria, et cetera. It sat on top of your workbook. Um, now, it was great at the time when it first came out, uh, but there were some inherent limitations to that. Uh, any upload query, uh, upload or query file was saved as a .dme for the query or .uwf, so you could have literally hundreds of them. I used to have to name mine by the form. Okay, this is what I'm going to load when I go to AM20.2, AM20.3, all those old form numbers. Um, same thing with the uploads. I'm like, oh shoot, I have to create an upload for every file that I want, every every tab that I've got an Excel spreadsheet. I need to make sure that I map it properly. So you end up with this mess. Now this is just for one particular client that I worked on, oh geez, back in 2016. And I had a bunch of DMEs for different files that I was looking at and then a couple of different upload files. Again, you could end up with hundreds or thousands of these. It gets a little hard to manage. Which version am I looking at? Which one should I be using when? Um, just, just a little messy, but, but that's what we dealt with, right? So another drawback, you had to be very, very careful running queries and uploads. I'm sure um, many of you ran into a situation where you either overwrote a tab by mistake. Uh, you, you said, OK, great, I'm going to pull this particular file. I'm going to put it on this tab, but by uh, because you specified the tab in the upload wizard or in the, uh, the query wizard, maybe you uploaded it to the wrong tab. And oh, shoot, I got to undo, redo. It's it was you had to be really paying attention to what you were doing. Um, had to make sure you're on the right tab. Every time you want to run a new query against a different table, you'd have to open up a new DME, then run back in and make sure, OK, I just opened up the new DME. Let me make sure I'm pointing at the right tab within my spreadsheet. Um, you just had to be careful. 
it's one of those things where you do it once or twice, you make a mistake and then you learn. <laughs> it's like putting your hand on a hot stove. Oh, shoot, I didn't want to do that again. Uh, upload, same same issue. Make sure you're on the correct uh, upload wizard uh, tab uh, on your, on your um, on the correct tab within your your spreadsheet. Make sure you're mapped all right. I, every once in a while, like I said, I'd open up the UWF and I'd have it pointed to the wrong tab, and then I'd get the hundreds of errors. Okay, you just again, you got to be very, you have to be very, very careful. Um, so we'll show how ISD kind of uh, kind of addresses that. So basic query. I'm going to start with a basic query. Uh, I'm interested in pulling data from Infor Asset Management slash items. So when you think of asset management for you non Finance people out there, um, I'm purchasing a piece of equipment and over in the accounting world, we have to keep track of that. We have to keep track of what we bought, how much we paid for it, how much uh, how much is that cost going to be spread out over years, uh, et cetera. So within the asset item form, I went out and I just said, OK, I pulled up an item. I hit control shift click and I can see, oh, there's my business class asset item. One of the great things about uh, Cloud Suite in general is that the names kind of make sense. In version 10, this same file is A-M-A-S-T-I-T-E-M. -E um, so it kind of makes sense, A-M, asset, item. Uh, but again, it's th this couldn't be more clear. <laughs> A-M, or, or sorry, asset, item, perfect. And the field that I happen to be on, um, is description. Okay, great. Again, in the old world, I think it was AM at AST description. In here, it's just the asset item description, piece of cake. Okay, it is uh, a field size of 60. Again, a lot of the field sizes in, um, in Cloud Suite have been expanded, which is nice. And the field type alpha lower, beautiful. So one of the main improvements is the way that the Enforce spreadsheet embeds itself into an individual tab. In the old days, again, I had my wizard, which sat on top of Excel. Uh, this basically latches on to the tab, which prevents you from basically running a query and overwriting the wrong thing or, or taking one query and overwriting one of your tabs that's got the right data with the wrong data. So once ISD is installed, to insert a new query, go to Inform menu on Excel, select Insert Query. Um, now, again, I'm, I'm focusing on a query. You can also pull lists. We'll talk about that a little bit later, um, but I'm just for right now going to focus on going to, uh, again, I'm, I'm on my in for tab or in for uh, menu, and I've got this little insert query. You'll notice a drop down menu here. I can also query um, lists if I want to, uh, which can be very, very powerful for purposes of reporting. If you are, if you're already on Cloud Suite or uh, within the cloud, you know those list views and how powerful they can be. Um, I can grab those and pull those into Excel, or again, I can actually query from the query them from right here. Okay, so Infor is then going to open up a form kind of like the Query Wizards Fields window, um, and it's basically going to ask you for okay, what's your data area? And in this case, I've got my file, my asset item that I looked at a couple of slides ago, and it's going to pop back. You'll see there's a lot of fields here. Uh, again, this is where don't get overwhelmed with the fields. Your key fields. Are require, are your required key fields are here in yellow. So the main ones I need are my finance enterprise group, my asset, my asset item. And then I can see, okay, or, uh, I can see here my description, the things that I would normally pull in. I'm going to show you what I would normally pull in for an asset item description here, or my asset, to, um, my asset uh, item query. And then I'm going to go ahead. And when I pull this back, when I click on insert, You'll notice over here on the left hand side, my wizard has basically embedded itself into Excel. It is latched on to this sheet, which again, it's great. When I had that the, the old version uh, 910, it floated above Excel and I had to be careful where I was mapping to. Now I've got it right here latched onto this spreadsheet. And you're gonna see um, uh, some benefits to this here in one second. The, uh, you'll also notice, I'm going to cover this in a second, when I when I refresh this or when I pull in my data, it's pulling into an Excel table. It didn't used to do that in the old version. It would basically just kind of dump it into almost like a flat file. Um, and I'll talk about the benefits or the benefits of what uh, Infor is doing here in a minute with this whole table functionality. But again, the big thing for me is it's latched on. I am right here on my spreadsheet 
and are on my worksheet on this particular tab. And I don't have to worry about, well, wait a minute, when I run this query, where is it going to go? Which tab is it going to go into? Which Where am I going to map it? Nope, I don't have to worry about that anymore. Huge, huge improvement. First and foremost, each tie is tied to an Excel sheet. Yes, I just mentioned that. In this case, I have three queries, asset, book, and item. I don't have to open three separate .dme files. Item, so here's my item, and I've got this attached to this particular uh, tab within Excel. And then I opened up a book query and said, okay, now for me, again, because I, I know the asset files pretty, you know, pretty well, I like to query both, uh, uh, both files and they relate to each other via an asset number. Uh, for anybody that knows, if you know how to do a related query or related fields query in um, uh, add-ins, you can do the same thing here. But for me, sometimes, and I just want to brute force this, I just want all my data. I want the asset, the item, and the book. Those fields are, or those three files are very, very much related to each other. And I'm just going to have all of those in, in three separate tabs. Okay, I'm going to talk about how I'm going to link all these together here in a minute. So another great thing, I can refresh all queries with one click. On the following slide, I have three queries, asset, item, and book, um, which I just showed you here in this tab or here. I got asset, item, and book. With add-ins, I'd have to load three different DH DME files, make sure everything is pointed to the right tabs, and then run each query individually. Uh, again, before I knew about M4 Spreadsheet Designer, fine, okay, that's what I have to do. That's the way it works, but I have to be careful. I need to pull up my file, do my query, load it, make sure I get the right results, move on to the next one, point it at the right tab, et cetera, et cetera. With ISD, all I need to do is click refresh and all. So here, within my little in menu, I do have an option for next to my little in logo here of refresh. If I just click refresh, it will refresh the tab that I'm on. But I got three tabs. I'm going to click refresh all. And then right here, refresh all. And then my asset, my book, and my item are all going to refresh. One click. I don't have to run three DMEs. I just have one. Once I've set these up in each individual tab. Okay. That for me is a huge benefit because, again, I... Can't tell you how many more how many times I I got a little confused with which tab I was on and uh, shoot I got to go back and redo it and do it again and run them each individually. Okay. Okay. Now, as far as wh when you saw there, I had the asset, the item, and the book. Um, in the old days, in the old uh, add-ins, I could run a query with related tabs or, or related um, related files, related fields. Uh, Infor has the same functionality here. So when, I, when I'm in a particular query, all I do is right click to add a relation and then my related fields will start popping in. Now again, it's a little bit overwhelming because as you can see here, just for my asset, you can see how long this little scroll button is here on the right hand side. There's lots and lots and lots of relations. I still use this. I still do um, related queries. I know that um, our folks do. Uh, it's, it's there. But for this particular example, I was just like, you know what? I just want to grab what I want out of the asset, the item, and the book. And that's it. I don't want to have to worry about, you know, going to relations and trying to jam this all into one file. Sometimes, um, depending upon how you ran your queries in add-ins, uh, you had to be careful. I, I would run into folks who would say, oh, my add-ins is broken. doesn't work. I'm like, well, what? okay, what did you do? <laughs> and more often than not, they would try to be running, they would try to run a query with A, way too many filters on it, and B, way too many relations in it. And they were related, and again, with, within Excel or within uh, add-ins, uh, you had to make sure that you were starting with the correct file and then making sure you were relating to, uh, to, to the right file. Uh, there were, <laughs> some people were better at it than others. In this particular case, like I said, well, I know the asset file, I know the item file, I know the book. Rather than try to do one query and jam all three of them together, I'm going to do three separate queries and let Excel do the heavy lifting of bringing them together. Okay, but you can do absolutely related fields and filter on them as well. Okay. The one major area of another major area, I should say, if not one, another major area of improvement is the way that Infor Spreadsheet uh, Designer returns the data back to Excel. Add-ins, you know, 
uh, it was returned in a basic format. You just kind of get, um, uh, you know, it would just kind of fill in your data. One of the one of the tough things was is I, if you remember, I used to have to tell it when I return the data, what do you want to do with it? Do you want to just return everything and overwrite everything, overwrite your spreadsheet and basically start over? Or do you not want to do that? <laughs> Which again, I've had clients that where they query, you know, a thousand rows of data and then say, you know what, I really just want the top 25. And they pull in the top 25, they forget to clear the spreadsheet and you've still got a thousand rows of data. Again, it, it, uh, Adams was doing exactly what you asked it to do. Um, but you know, you just had to you just had to be careful. In this particular case, um, and, and again, it just pulled it back in a basic format. And then if I wanted to create a pivot table, um, I would just have to be careful pulling that pivot table. If I reran my query and either A added rows or added new columns, I'd have to be careful to run back out to that pivot table and say, oh, make sure you expand your selection here. Go out and grab the three additional columns I just pulled. Go out and grab the additional 500 rows I just added. Uh, it, it could be, again, you, you just have to be careful. It could get a little messy. ISD improves that by returning the data in an Excel table, okay? Why is a table awesome? When the data expands and contracts, the, the table resizes accordingly. So I'm gonna show you that here in a minute, how that works. Um, but again, if I just decided, oh shoot, I forgot the description. Ah, shoot, I, I needed to pull in a little uh, another piece of information here. Again, in the old days, I would go into uh, add-ins, add the new data, run my query, and then that data would usually show up at the end of the at the end of the columns, and I'd have to be careful when I reported on it, et cetera. Here, the table is going to expand and contract um, accordingly. And if I use a pivot table and it's looking at the in the Excel table, when things expand or contract, my pivot table will pick it up automatically. Okay, that's a huge deal because I I just like to do things better, simpler, one time. Don't don't make me go back and have to resize my pivot table and find the data. No, this is gonna this makes things so much better. Um, and using Excel tables makes pivot tables much easier. So when ISD returns a result, you'll see Excel formats the data as a table. So what will happen is anytime you're clicked anywhere into that table, I'm clicked into cell A1. This little table design menu comes up um, for anybody that's used pivot tables. When you insert a pivot table, you have a couple of a different uh, of additional pivot table menus. So what's happening here is a it brought through a table. One of the nice things is another nice thing is, is that if you just insert a table by yourself, you pull in some data, you insert a table. Uh, Excel will basically say, OK, that's table number one. And and you insert the next table and Excel will come back and say, OK, that's table number two. I can always come back in and rename them here in this little table name here. But the nice thing is Info is labeling them for us. And so anytime I bring through a table, it'll say, oh, OK, you want the asset item? I'm going to bring through and call it asset item. So ISD will name each table based upon the business class being returned for the three files I queried, asset item and book. It named them. List map table asset, list map table asset book, list map table asset item. It's good if I'm referring to these or if I'm trying to find them. If you know your find certain, you know, find functionality within Excel, it's very easy to go in and, and, and grab these things. Okay. But again, that's based on, I'm just going to go back here for one second. Right here, the table name. Now, uh, and again, Info is giving it a nice name that I can find that I can refer to later. Okay. Okay, so let's talk pivot tables. Why? Pivot tables are awesome. Everything I'm calling here is awesome because Excel is awesome. Pivot tables are awesome. You know, if anybody, you know, for the people that know me on the call, I spend all day, every day in Excel. I think a lot of you guys too, <laughs> maybe whether or not, uh, even if you don't want to, uh, but pivot tables are great. Um, they're not just great, they're awesome. In the old days of add-ins, you could certainly create pivot tables. However, it was a little tricky, messier, given that add-ins returned the data, you know, in, in sort of, I'll say, like a flat file. It just kind of came back. And again, if it expanded, contracted, I'd have to go out and figure out a way to, to make sure that all my pivot tables linked, everything always pulling all the data. I can't tell you how many times I've had a, a client come back and say, hey, I just did this query and the pivot table isn't working. 
Um, so it's broken. I'm like, well, did you did you add more data? Did you? Yes. Well, did you expand? Did you tell the pivot table that you have more data? No. OK, well, that's the that's the issue. As mentioned before, ISD turns the data into a nicely formatted table. You say, so what? I say, so what? I'll show you, so what? Excuse me. I just love pivot tables and regular tables. OK, so here's an asset report. This is an asset um, report out of the asset management system. This report has pretty much been the same since, uh, I don't know, 1998, 1997, 1995, the, the, the last time they actually did a major update to asset management. Again, asset management is great, um, but the data here, uh, it's from a PDF file. Um, I and I could throw this if I wanted to into an Excel file. Uh, it gets formatted a little chunky. I don't I don't like it, but it's got all the information I need. I've got okay for here 343. I've got a, 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 a Mazda sedan. Here's the cost. Here's how much my depreciation is, and I've got my totals down here. Great, a million five twenty, uh, uh, fifteen million in. In, the, in what it costs me, I've got depreciation for the year, the uh, life to date, et cetera. So, and total assets, 301. All right, great. This is great. I can run this and make sure I tie out. I don't want it in a PDF. <laughs> I will run the PDF just to kind of make sure and say, yeah, okay, I see what my numbers are. This is great. Fine. This is what asset management tells me what I have. I can make sure I can run back and, and tie it out to the general ledger. Uh, but it's boring. I don't. It's it's a PDF. I I can't do anything with this. It's not interactive. I want to slice it, dice it, filter it. Good luck with that with a PDF. <laughs> so how to create a pretty pivot table? Easy. So I'm just going to walk through this real quickly, and then I'm going to bring up Excel. I'm going to try to actually come out of here and 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 bring up Excel and. If it breaks, I apologize, but I've got the pictures in the slides, but sometimes it's easier to just actually show it in Excel. Um, so what I'm going to show you is standard Microsoft Excel 365 functionality. No macros, no codes, no nothing. If um, if I confuse you on this again, we can we can certainly if I go through it a little bit too fast, we can uh, walk through it or, or I'll, I'll certainly be willing to take, you know, emails, questions, et cetera. You'll have my contact information, Molly, Tom, et cetera. Uh, you can you can figure out a way to, to, to get at me to, 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 to help you with this. But uh, if you most folks now, I think most companies uh, are using three Excel 365. It's a subscription model, right? Uh, Excel keeps up, you know, keeps updated with new functionality. Um, you don't have to do updates every, you know, it's not like you had Excel 2007, 2010, 2013, 2016, right? You just have Excel 365, kind of like Cloud Suite, right? I don't have any big major upgrades. I just kind of get my CUs on a monthly basis. I don't have to re-implement or reinstall all the time. So what I'm going to show you here, straight Excel 365 functionality, no macros, no code. I'm not writing anything. I am I as good as I am in Excel. I don't know macros all that well. I can I can get by. I can do some basic stuff, but I don't know. Just just doesn't just doesn't appeal to me. Excel has made it very very easy over the years to kind of just do things without having to use code. Okay, so one thing is that in this particular case you would have to understand basic relationships. I can make the argument that if you know how to use Inforce, or, um, add ins add-ins, uh, and you're, you're a sophisticated uh, add-ins user, I will bet that you at least understand basic um, uh, relational data tables, right? You understand, okay, in this particular case, I have an asset, and I can have multiple records associated with that asset. Um, for, for example, with an asset, I have uh, multiple books. I have, to, I have to calculate depreciation, and I have to do it multiple ways. I might have to do it for book purposes, which is for accounting purposes, and I have to do it for tax purposes to send to the government, to send my tax return. So I will have one asset with two books associated with it. So that's the relationship. I have one asset, two books. Uh, think about it on the payroll side, right? I've got one employee record, which would be myself, 
And I might have, if I get paid 24 times during the course of the year, I'm going to have one uh, record for my um, employee, 24 paychecks that are associated with that. So I've got my main file or my main uh, uh, my main file, which is which is the employee file, and then I have a paycheck file, a payment file where I have all the payments associated with that. Same thing in supply chain. If I have a purchase order, I have a single purchase order with multiple distribution lines. I've got the single purchase order and multiple related lines associated with it. So you can go take this. Uh, I tried really hard to create one example for finance, for supply chain, and for uh, payroll GHR. So that's my that's my full blown description of related fields. Um, not super complicated, but again, if you're already using uh, Enforce Spreadsheet to, or sorry add-ins today, and you use you click on your using those related fields, you're already seeing how this kind of works. Okay, it's a little bit and so it'll be a little bit different here in Excel, but pretty simple. So we'll walk through it. OK, as mentioned before, at this point, I have three separate queries slash tables in my Excel file. Oh, wow, I put the highlights in first. That was good. OK, so <laughs> first in Excel, you are again, if you Excel 365, you have this option for power pivot. Back when this first became a thing, power pivot, it's for those of you that know pivot tables, pivot tables are fantastic. Power Pivot takes it to the next level. Uber Power Pivot, Awesome Power Pivot, uh, Awesome Pivot Tables. Uh, one of the great things about uh, Power Pivot is it makes it very easy to pull multiple tabs or multiple sheets or multiple tables into one pivot table. Uh, I've, I've worked with a lot of clients where they just say, OK, great, I know how to do a pivot table and I'm going to run a query that again, pulls as many related tables as I can into one big gigantic query, one big one big tab in my Excel workbook so that I can then run my pivot table off of the one sheet. Um, nothing wrong with that. I, I still do that kind of stuff where I just can try to j j uh, jam everything into one big tab. Um, but with the way that ISD is pulling its queries on separate individual tabs and where I can use uh, Power Pivot, which used to be, again, Excel is kind of morphed. This used to be a separate uh, product that you had to purchase, and it was an Excel add-in. And then over the years, they kind of got a lot of pressure as uh, you know Microsoft Power BI you know, became a thing. And they're like, you know what? We've got this Power Pivot tool that sits in Excel. Let's just make it available to everybody. Okay. So within Power Pivot, I have several options here, a uh, data model, calculations, relationships, it's, and settings. Right here, I clicked on my first asset tab, clicked on add to data model, okay? So Power Pivot for Excel will open up. Now, if you've used Power Query, which is another fantastic tool in, uh, in Excel, the window looks a little bit familiar. It's a little bit different, but it kind of looks familiar. So I can see, that I've got when I when I um, clicked add to data model, so it popped open this power pivot for Excel. It's like a little add in window and it says, OK, great. So I see that you want to add uh, your asset table to your data model. OK, great. I've got I've got one particular field or one particular uh, tab uh, file in my data model, but I want to get all three of them in there. I need all three of them in there to make this useful. So I'm going to click back on the spreadsheet. Click on the item tab, add it to the data model, add it to the data model, then click back into my book tab, add to data model. Now I have all three here highlighted in yellow. I got my asset, my book, and my item. I have all three of them together. Beautiful. That's exactly what I wanted. Um, now I just have to tell Excel how do these things relate to each other? How do they how do they tie together? So I'm going to click over here in the diagram view, and now it has it has my three tables, the asset, the item, and the book. So I know that on the asset file, I have one asset that ties to multiple books, one asset that ties to um, uh, multiple items. All I did, and I'll show this when I pull up Excel, is just you click on the asset. So I clicked on the asset, dragged it over to the asset here, and it just populated a relationship. Drag the asset here, tied it over to asset here. Now I have a relationship there. So I have one asset, multiple books, 
multiple items. OK, again, if that piece gets a little bit tricky or if you want some help walking through that kind of stuff, we could we'd certainly be, be willing to help you. But I didn't do any coding. I didn't have to know SQL to do this. Uh, for those of you that know SQL, you can actually go behind the scenes and do your joins, inner joins, outer joins, etc. I don't have to do any of that. I just dragged and dropped um, because I just happen to know how these fields work or how these tables work and how they relate to each other. OK, again, no code, no nothing here. Now, insert your pivot table from the home tab. I clicked on pivot table. Oh, sorry, from the home tab within, I should specify this, from the home tab within uh, Power Pivot for Excel. So once I had everything all linked together, I just clicked on pivot table here, pivot table here, and it just says, okay, where do you want to put this? And I just said, well, I'll put it in a new worksheet, just like I would normally do uh, for any other pivot table. OK. And then. I can pivot to my heart's content. So here you'll see this kind of looks if you've done again anything with pivot tables. Normally what you'll see is just over here on the right hand side, you would just see all the fields. If you just pulled in one sheet, you would see all the fields that relate to that one sheet. OK. But here I have them all. I have all three files. I can start to pull in you know, whatever I want. Um, note that all three tables are available to select from. All my numbers here tied to the boring reports so that million one five twenty eight. That yes, that ties back to my boring report that I showed earlier, that boring PDF. This is real time. I did get a question like, what is what is this pulling from? It's pulling from whatever's in uh, because this is pulling from from a business class. If, if I've gone ahead and added an asset and updated it, um, it will go ahead and pull right into this into this query. So it's quote output quote unquote real time. It's my personal teeny tiny data lake. Now again, I understand the concept of the data lake. I understand the concept of of, of real time data, etc. I'm not going to pull in a thousand tables <laughs> into Excel like. I, I did have a client when I showed them a little bit of this. So like, oh, well, I'll just query every table. No, don't do that. Uh, Excel will probably choke at some point and say, oh, my God, you've got too many queries in here. I just can't handle this. Um, so it's about using the right tool for the right job. For me, this is a nice, neat little uh, you know, report that I can use instead of my asset register, my asset report, because I want to slice it and dice it. I don't want it to be boring. I don't want just the one number. I just have to refresh my ISD, refresh my pivot tables, and I'm done. Two clicks. Refresh all of my um, pivot table uh, on my ISDs, get all my new data, refresh my pivot table, and I'm done. So, <laughs> okay, so this is my final slide. Hang on one second. I'm going to come out here. I'm going to pull up my version of Excel. So here is my nice, neat little pivot table, right? And I'm like, OK, this is great. This tied out to my stupid, boring. Uh, report here from uh, my PDF. So I've got a million five. Let me turn on my little cursor here. I've got a million five. Uh, th oh, a million three fifteen. OK, never mind. I went ahead and I added a couple of assets. <laughs> oh, shoot. OK. It does tie. I pulled up the wrong report. Hang on, I'll get that in a minute. I got the wrong month in here. Um, but I can start slicing and dicing. So again, if I want to know where my asset location is. Okay, so here's all my building by location, my equipment by location, my vehicles by location. Okay, so again, this makes it much easier at month end to go ahead and start working with my report. One other quick thing. OK, so notice here I've got my asset. I've got my description over here on my asset. Make sure I'm still logged in here. It's just going to take a second to pull back. OK, so here's my asset. And OK, so I've got my finance enterprise with my asset, my description. I've got everything here, but now I come back and I think, ah, oh, shoot, I wanted to add a field. I wanted to add reference. I forgot to put, throw my reference in here. I'm going to click on reference and uh, add ins or uh, sorry, Inverse Spreadsheet Designer is going to throw in this reference field. That's blank because it's like, OK, great. I put it in here, 
But I'm going to um, come out to info and I'm going to refresh and it's going to take a minute. And it's rebuilding and now see how my reference field came in here. OK, great. So now I just added a column, my table resized. I come back over to my pivot table. And boom, here's my reference right here. So again, it, in the old days of add-ins, I'd have to run out, make sure that I added that reference in there, re-ran, refresh the query, it would repopulate everything, and then I have to be very, very careful to make sure that my um, to make sure that my query picked that up, uh, or that my pivot table picked that up. Okay, so I've got you got a you got a question. Okay, perfect. Hang on here. Let me see if I can. How do you add relation when you create a query by or from list? How do I add a relation? Okay, let me just. Uh, here's the chat. Let me see if I can see that. How do you add relation when you query by or from a list? All right. Well, let's uh, let's take a look. I don't know now. With, and somebody from my side might be able to help me with this. I don't know if. Let me pull up a new sheet here. And let me, so this is where, again, I got my little in for thing. I'm going to, instead of, I've got my insert query. Is this what we're talking about? A list? Is that, uh, is it Anya? Yes, that's what I'm talking about. Okay. Yep. So if I, if I do, okay, it's thinking here. I might've gotten timed out when I, I logged in here, so I'm trying to pull a query. All right, so I don't know if it. Oh, wait a minute. No, oh, yeah, here it's on my other screen. Sorry. <laughs> uh, here's my FSM, and then you wanted to pull. Oh, wait a minute. Hang on. Business class. Shoot. Anybody know a list off the top of their head? Uh, let me just see if I've got an accounting unit list. All right, accounting unit. Um, let me do posting accounting units. And then you're saying here is where you'd want to add a um, a relation. Yes. I okay. So again, I'll, I'll pose this back to. I know I got a bunch of people from Bales on here. I don't know if there are relationships between lists. I think the lists are kind of standalone. Is that a true statement or not? Did I did I lie when I said that, guys? No, it's yeah. I, I've never been able to relate from a list. Okay, because again, I think and and, and correct me if I'm wrong. I think what happens, uh, uh, Onya, is that. The list is kind of self-contained. It's like, okay, we created a specific list, and it, it's not a table, it's not a business class, so it's not it's not relating to anything. Did I did I answer that correctly? Now, yeah. I, I I will just add that you can configure that list using Configuration Console um, to make changes and get related fields in there. But obviously, that's global then. So if you're making that change to that that list, you know it's going to be visible to everybody, but it would then um, show up on these queries. Perfect. Oh, okay. It would show it would show up here, Mark, on the query, but it, but I then wouldn't be able to relate that list to something else no. here. Yeah. No. Correct. Correct. Okay. You'd have to you'd have to do those relationships on configuration console in the application ahead of time. Yep. Gotcha. Okay. Thanks, Mark. <laughs> um. Anything. Anything else you guys can think of? Like I said, I've got about I, I tried to leave about 10 minutes for for questions. Either I've put everyone to sleep or I've just thrilled you guys so much and you're all on mute and you can't contain your excitement. <laughs> but again, like I said, what I wanted to focus on today was, uh, you know, again, some of the differences. I think that once you get used to, of course, when I first saw in for spreadsheet designer, I thought, ah, I don't know if I like this because I don't like anything new. I'm old and I don't like anything new, but once I started to work with it and play with it, I thought, oh yeah, this is definitely better, especially around those whole DME files and, and UWF files and having to 
you know, configure and manage and maintain those. And oh man, that was that was just kind of ugly. Here, everything kind of embeds itself to a particular spreadsheet. I think it's a lot easier to work with. If you know your way around um, pivot tables and power pivot, uh, again, you want to experiment with that. It's really not too difficult. You saw that I was able to basically with just a couple of different mouse clicks to be able to just come in, get a pivot table based upon all my different tables out here. And they're all related and yeah that's it it really didn't it was really pretty easy straightforward piece but the, them just come the, the results just coming back into a table is really really nice and then i can use use a lot of uh, my embedded excel functionality here so any other questions <laughs> Well, if not, like I said, uh, Molly, uh, you know, you've got, I think, uh, Molly's contact information, Tom's contact information. Uh, again, there's a lot of people on this phone from Bales who really know their stuff when it comes to this as well. Um, but yeah, if you'd like anything else. OK, so let's see. So you do so, have another question. Hang on one second. It's just me. We saw those last two slides. Yeah, we have oh, one okay. more. We have one more question in the chat too. Yeah, so so let's see. Now this is this is okay. So I'm getting. I'm going to ask for my uh, Kelly and Nikki and maybe uh, Mark input here. So um, Joe used uh, indexes a lot in add-ins. For example, if he wanted to pull data for 50 employees, he could enter the employee numbers in the index to limit my data. So we did have indexes in um, in. Uh, uh, Add-ins. Add is there, can that be done in ISD using a filter? So if you wanted to filter down to 50 employees, would you use the filter or would you do something else? I would use the filter. How about you, Nikki? Uh, yeah, I've never done it to limit the number though, um, but I'm sure it can be done. I mean, I yeah, know I you... pull for just one employee at a time because I just want to see yep. the data to do my uploads. You know, I'll, I'll hand key it in, then query the data out to make sure I have everything there to actually put my upload together, upload data for that business Absolutely. class. Yeah. And uh, so hopefully that answers that, Joe. Tammy, um, will there be a similar session for uploads? Yes, uh, I'll pull together something for uploads. I Again, I, I there was so much going on with just the queries. I thought, you know what, let me just focus on that for today, kind of talk about the integration with that with Excel and make sure I got that all covered. Um, but yeah, we'd be happy to, to pull one together for uploads as well with our kind of tips and tricks. I know though, I think actually even, I don't know if it's Nikki or I, I've seen I've seen ones before where we've had some folks that that have uh, keyed in on the query piece a little bit, but we can, we can absolutely do that too. Um, Kelly, did you want to did you want to grab this yeah. for me? Did you want to share? And Molly, I am going to need your help a little bit because I don't remember what next Friday session. Nope, this oh, was the wait. last one. <laughs> sure. Okay, so I do have this right. I, yep. I'm looking at the calendar. Oh my god. Okay. Um, just so everyone knows, this wraps up this quarterly of Inf informative Friday sessions. But look out for next Friday session. We'll start in February. We'll have some great new presentations for you, and um, come join us for a lot of fun. As well as I know Arden mentioned a couple times, you know, get with us and, you know, we'll help work through things. Well, we do offer coffee with consultants. OK, so it's a free 30 minute session with one of our experts to discuss stuff like Arden talked about, about queries, about uploads, about relations, about anything, having a little challenge with open enrollment, um, benefits, um, assets, matching, whatever it is. But you uh, you can schedule it. Go to bail www.bailsllc.com and send an email, and we'll reach out to you and get back with you and schedule a time with one of our knowledgeable consultants. Was all I, that's all I had already. Wasn't as exciting as yours. Sorry. No, I appreciate that. That's it's funny because when what what I was actually doing in the background is I was pulling up. Because I had, when I was like, oh yeah, these numbers all tie. I was pulling up the 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 right report so that yeah, I I can actually send you guys and show you how it actually ties, so you actually believe me. But anyway, no, we appreciate your time today, and um, yeah, if there's anything that we can answer for you, uh, we'll we'll pull together something on queries next. And um, yeah, thanks for thanks for coming, everybody. Thanks everyone. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank Happy thanks, Friday. Arden. Have a great weekend. You too. You too. Thank you very much.
Thanks, Arne. Thanks, guys.